All right, it is Tuesday evening before a very, very cold day in Lake Forest. And this video is to help you review for your quiz that will be happening over sections, it's technically 5.1 and 5.2 from your textbook. So derivatives of natural log and integrals that turn into natural logs. So I'm going to take you through each one of these. You can feel free to skip around the video if there's a certain problem you need an answer to. Um, it might take two videos. I apologize if I talk too much, but this is kind of like having a built-in review day um, for your topics. So first, fill in the blanks to complete the properties of logarithms. This is pre-calculus knowledge. The natural log of A divided by B can be split up into the natural log of A minus the natural log of B. Natural log of A times B can be split up into the natural log of A plus the natural log of B. And then if we know that our base here is a positive number, we can swing this B down in front and raising something to a power now gets turned into a multiplication problem. Keep in mind these things all came from your properties of exponents. And b to the m to the n, right? We know how to deal with each one of these, so we have similar operations that come about when we deal with logarithms. Problem two says find the derivative by first using the properties of logarithms to expand. So a reason I know that I should use the properties of logs in addition to this problem telling me is that I already see a logarithm and I've got this big mess that would require a quotient rule and a chain rule, but instead I can use logarithms to help me out. So this is the natural log of x plus two over x minus four all to the one third power. So using properties of logs, notice I have not done any calculus yet. I can use what I listed above to break this up into two separate logarithms with the one third, you could distribute that in if you wanted to, or you can just leave it where it is. So from here then, now I'm ready to take the derivative with respect to x as my independent variable. So this will just become y prime, you can also write it as dy dx if you'd prefer, equals one third is a constant multiple, so it's just going to be there in front. Derivative of the natural log of a function is one over that function or the argument times the derivative of that argument minus, same thing here, 1 over x plus 4, all times 1. So to clean this up, dy dx will be equal to 1 over 3x plus 6 minus 1 over 3x plus 12. I think I just realized my answer key left that with a minus sign, and it shouldn't. We should have the 3 with a plus 12. So final answer, good to go. Number three, find the derivative by first taking the natural log of both sides and using log properties. All right, well, looking at this, yes, the directions tell me to take a natural log of both sides, but the other reason why I know I need a natural log of both sides is because I have some function that is being raised to another function. So I know how to deal with a base varying and the exponent being constant. I will soon learn how to deal with the base constant and the exponent varying. This will come later. But right now what I have is something similar to x to the x, where I've got two things that are varying, both the base and the exponent. So I'm going to introduce a natural log. There was not one there before. I myself am going to place it into the problem. Because what that allows me to do is to get rid of this exponent issue by swinging down the square root of x. So notice I still haven't done any calculus. This is all pre-calculus work. And now I have a product. Well, I know how to take the derivative of a product. I've been doing that since September. So the derivative with respect to x will be 1 over whatever's on the inside times the derivative of that inner argument equals, here I'm going to have a first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup work. It says I'm supposed to find the derivative. So I'm trying to isolate this guy. So I'm going to leave this as 1 over y dy dx. Cosine over sine is going to be cotangent. And then this I'm just going to do a little bit of rearranging and write this as 1 over 2 square root of x natural log 
of sine x. If you don't clean up that one, that's not as big of a deal. Last thing then to get that dy dx all by itself would be to multiply both sides by y. So now my final answer, dy dx equals the square root of x times the cotangent of x plus 1 over 2 square root of x natural log of the sine of x sine of x all times my y which was the sine of x to the square root of x and this is my final answer now on your quiz it's not going to directly tell you to take a logarithm. You need to recognize, again, that you have something varying to something varying, and so you need to introduce the natural log. Problem four, find the equation of the tangent line. Well, the equation of a tangent line needs a point and a slope, so I'm going to start by writing y minus something equals a slope times x, and I know this one came from here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out the coordinate point. So I know I have the point 1, comma, well, y is equal to the natural log of 3 minus 1 squared, which means that y is equal to the natural log of 2. And I'm just going to leave that like that. I'm not going to get a calculator for my quiz, so I might as well start practicing with that natural log of 2. Which means the last thing I need to work to find is this part, which would be the derivative of this function at x equals 1. So I'm going to go ahead and say y prime is equal to 1 over 3 minus x squared times negative 2x. But I specifically need y prime when x is equal to 1. So negative 2 times 1 over 3 minus 1 squared, negative 2 over 2, which is a slope of negative 1. Final answer for my equation of the tangent line. All right, back page. It says in problems 5 through 11, it really should just be in problems 5 through 10, uh, find the indefinite integral. Consider using division, u subs, or any other techniques for integration. Well, when we look at this, okay, I see this as a division problem. Do we have a quotient rule for integrals? No, not in our course. So instead, I want to try a u sub, and I know I'm supposed to try the denominator for my u well, if u is x plus 5, that seems weird to get rid of an x cubed with that. So then I'm going to see that this is actually telling me to divide. All right, well, talk to yourself a little bit. How could you do this division? Uh, you could use synthetic if you would like to because we have a linear on the bottom. So I could put negative 5 in the synthetic box. I would need a 1, a 0 for a placeholder, a negative 20, and a 10. Bring down the 1 negative 5, negative 5, 25, negative 25, minus 15. And so what I just figured out is that this part in green is mathematically exactly equivalent to having x squared minus 5x plus 5 plus a remainder of negative 15 when I was dividing by x plus 5. Okay, so that's if you want to do synthetic. But some of you I know just love long division and want every chance you have to practice it. So I'm going to have x to the third plus 0x squared minus 20x plus 10 and divide that by x plus 5. So first round, x to the third divided by x is x squared. Multiply, I get x to the third plus 5x squared. Subtract negative 5x squared, bring it all down. Next round, negative 5x squared divided by x is going to be negative 5x. That was supposed to switch colors for me. So negative 5x squared, this will become plus 25x. I'm going to subtract that whole line. This will become minus 25x. Hold up. Sorry about that, because now when I do my subtraction, negative 20 minus a negative 25 leaves me with 5x. Bring down the 10. One more time, 5x divided by x leaves me with 5. This will then be 5x 
plus 25, I'm going to subtract, and I get negative 15. So I have a remainder of negative 15 when I was dividing by x plus 5. And notice, totally the same. So does it matter if you do synthetic or long division on this problem? No, it does not. What's important here is we haven't done any calculus yet, and I know that's the part you're all waiting for. So the integral of x squared is going to be x to the third over 3. The integral of negative 5x is going to be negative 5x squared over 2. The antiderivative of 5 is going to be 5x. And now I get to this other integral that's causing me some trouble because I once again have this division issue. Well, this time when I divide, I can't do the long division. I can try what I wanted to try originally, which was a u sub. So u equals x plus 5. du equals dx. So this negative 15 is just going to hang out in front, and I get the integral of 1 over u du. Not sure why my pen has a lag time to it. So this then becomes negative 15 natural log x plus 5. Each one of these would have had their own plus c, but they get absorbed into one constant added on at the end. All right, that was a lot of work considering this was the actual line of calculus, right? This is the part that's newer to us, but we just had to do some division to get there. All right, uh, I'm going to actually skip problem six and come back to it in the next video. Uh, that way... We have some more time for it because it's a longer one. So for number seven, uh, if I think about a product, I don't have a product rule. So I want to try a u substitution. And I notice that x squared is inside of another function. So that means that du would be equal to 2x dx. So I need to adjust by a 1 half. And then I have tangent of u du. Well, I either have memorized my rules, and I know that this will become negative the natural log of the absolute value of cosine of x squared plus 1, or sorry, rather of u. Plus c. And then I can go back and plug in my u value. I could check that by taking the derivative. Or if you are not a memorizer, which is totally great, means you actually understand the math and what's happening, this is really the same thing as the sine of u over the cosine of u du. We can then let, let's say, w, pun intended, equal the cosine of u. dw equals negative sine of u du. So now this is 1 half the integral. 1 over w dw, adjust by a negative sign, which will become negative 1 half the natural log of w, but w was equal to cosine of u, and cosine of u, u was equal to x squared plus 1, and so we get back to exactly where we want to if you prefer this method. All right, go ahead and watch the next video for problems 6, 8, 9, and 10.